you've been following us from video one, you would actually have uh, felt that there is a unique, there is a uniqueness about this information that can, that will in the future separate companies that hit to all that we've been talking about and companies that just uh, you know watch the videos without actually taking action. So it's good to be here once again. And please, before you go further, kindly hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well, so that when next we post uh, any content, you'll be the first to view and the first to know. And of course, we are doing this for the next 50 days. Uh, in another couple of um, 30 something days or so, we would have wrapped this uh, entire session up uh, for us to commence another session on negotiation mastery advantage. So please follow this channel and this is in response to the feedback we've been getting thus far. And that topic simply without wasting much of our time has to do with what are the benefits of you? What are the benefits of being an advisory board member? What are the benefits of being uh, a non-executive uh, independent director? Some people have said, uh, are there even benefits? You know, what, what is it to gain? Can these companies really pay enough? Is it always all about the pay? Or it's also about impact and it's also about, well, we'll be dealing with all of that in this video. So benefit number one, for those of you that feel that this could be a fulfilling and rewarding career path, thumbs up to you. It's, it's de it definitely is. I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time myself, you know, um, supporting uh, companies basically within this particular role. And I know that it's fulfilling. It's great to see where you show up and uh, the MD shows up. He reads out all the data, you know, punching in data and all that. And at the end of the day, you have to look at that information and make sense out of it. So that's very fulfilling. It's also rewarding uh, financially, yes. Mentally, yes. Emotionally, yes. Spiritually, of course, yes. So it's rewarding, it's fulfilling. If you see this as a career path, something that you're passionate about doing, I trust that you would want to take branding yourself and positioning yourself in that aligned manner that people can begin to see that you can actually deliver and bring value to their company. Number two, benefits. Equity and pay or equity or pay. So, some persons might want to work on the board uh, in an advisory capacity for some form of equity, depending on your own level, you understand? So, um, somebody maybe who has not really done so much, talking about equity at the initial stages might not really make so much sense. You have to go in there within the first couple of years, maybe one to two years, you have that time to prove yourself, to prove yourself as somebody who is really delivering exceptional value to the company before you can even start talking about equity. Equity is not the first game you bring to the table, especially if you are a newbie in this particular area. You have to show up every day. You have to show up, not every day, but as soon as, as far as the company requires your service, as far as the company requires your attention, your input, your inflow, your expertise, you have to show up, you have to deliver, and you have to do more than you are being paid for. That takes me to the second ambit of this particular benefit pay. Some persons definitely want to be paid for that particular service. There are some companies that uh, may not put pay as a front burner consideration. They might see pay as something that, okay, the company is making profit, they will pay. Uh, maybe some startups here, we are just starting up, we don't have funds to pay at that level, but we can give some form of stipend and all that. That's totally fine. It's still a form of pay. So one of the benefits is either you're running for equity or you are rooting for equity or you are rooting for pay. If you want pay, then you can negotiate that. Because most companies definitely already have uh, a payment scale that they adopt. So if you have those kind of companies, you might not have so much room for negotiation in that uh, particular regard, but you will definitely be getting something. Uh, there are companies that beyond they paying for each advisory board uh, sitting, uh, they, they, they will take care of your accommodation, your airfare, depending on what part of the country you reside in and all of that. So that's the number two point. Then for exposure and networking, oh my God, don't forget that you are not the only person who is going to be showing up in that boardroom. Never get too high up in your egocentric thinking to feel that, oh, it's just you. There are a whole lot of persons, the MD is going to be there, the CEO is going to be there, the CFO is going to be there, top management staff will be there, other advisory board members will be there, then the board of directors would also be there. So imagine being in a room filled with a lot of individuals who have different interests, 
But one thing that brings them together is the good and the improvement of that particular company. So you are with people maybe who have a finance background, who have traveled abroad, who have several exposure across China, across Asia, America, Europe, you know, things like that. You are in the room with different kinds of people. So that's a perfect experience that you can have in terms of exposure and also networking. It's very important. You never know who would be in that room and who can actually take you to your next level based on your own personal goals and career goals and all of that. So that's another benefit. It's a very key benefit. You shouldn't take the opportunity for being on an advisory board for granted, not at all. Another thing that comes to mind is it helps you to build solid and lasting relationships. You know, I've seen where persons who didn't know each other before from the whole exposure to networking, now relationships. People now beyond the boardroom, they have a life together, they have a life, you know, where people can run into each other, visit each other, you know, they can build professional relationships, personal relationships even, you know, all of those things are also factors that you would need to put into consideration. And, and it's important because also you have that relationship with the founder, like it's, it's interesting to be in the room where you have the founder being there, other board members are there. For me, the founder is that person who, who the, the, the dream originator, the dream originator. It, it gives you an opportunity to really look into the mind, look into the mind, look into the intellect, look into the spirit of the person behind the company. That would definitely tell us a lot. Then, another thing I want to share also is that as our faces are different, so also our thoughts are different, our actions are different. I'm looking at this now from the purpose of, from, from the point of diversity. You would have the Christian, the Muslim, the Hindu, the Shintoi, you know, different kinds of people, the black, the white, the yellow, the red, you know, people from different walks of life, you know, so that diversity is actually important for the growth of a company that serves diverse kinds of people. You don't want to fill up your boardroom with everybody looking like you. You don't want to fill up your boardroom with everybody looking like you. If you're a melancholy, for example, you are just looking for people who are too, who share your own pattern of thought and behavior. No, you need to make your boardroom spicy and sporadic, like everybody must be coming with something different and diverse. You know, that's actually the point that I'm trying to make, and I hope you get that point. So when next you're thinking about people that should work closely with you on your team. Don't, don't be myopic on the basis of tribe, on the basis of religion. Um, I, I did an earlier video where I made reference to the fact that we needed two persons on the board with some northern feel, northern flow. The company had already, um, in terms of diversity, got persons from other geopolitical zones and all that were like, oh, this company is going to be working uh, in Abuja and the Northern region. Why not look for northerners that have given it their all, have paid their price, you know, in industry, in intellect, in hard work, and bring them on board. And we're able to get two very wonderful people. And uh, of course, I'm very sure that their addition to that particular board, uh, advisory board, would be very, 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 very beneficial to the company. So we've talked about several things. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is in terms of enhancing your own portfolio, your own portfolio and your expertise. Imagine you, you are serving on maybe like three different boards who operate in three different industries or sectors and you add that to your own personal resume. Like that's so beautiful. It shows how diverse your experience is. It shows how diverse your, diverse your mindset is. It shows how diverse the skill sets that you have is. So if you have all of that, that diversity gives you an enhanced portfolio. You know, so when you want to talk about yourself, maybe in, um, in a business environment, for example, you will be having so much more to share than people who are just living in a straight jacket world or in a straight jacket life, doing business in a straight jacket way and all that. That gives you an edge because of your enhanced portfolio and expertise. Um, talking about learning, one of the most beautiful things about um, having to serve on an advisory board is the fact that you would learn so much. You would learn so much. In fact, on two or three of the videos I've done so much, it has been as a result of my learning. In fact, much of everything that I'm even saying actually is about the things that I've learned, things that I've seen firsthand, and I'm sure that there's still more to learn. So see, see it as a learning curve. 
if if you if you if you if you find a company or a startup that cannot necessarily pay you, see it as a learning curve. See it as a learning curve. See it as a learning curve. Um, I, I want to have the story of um, of was it Uber? Maybe it was Uber and uh, the Beyonce story. You know, there was a time Beyonce needed the services. Sorry, Uber needed the services of Beyonce, and somehow she rather to be paid in shares rather than cash. You know, and for her that was a learning curve. A learning curve in terms of what it takes to really be somebody that can identify a good product and the investment prospects of a particular company. And let's say she took payment cash, maybe $300,000 as the case may be. What she had now earned over time based on being paid in equity and shares of that particular company was way, 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 way more than she would have been paid some years earlier. So it's a learning curve in terms of our own financial education. So when you have that opportunity and Everything comes calling for your attention in a particular uh, advisory position. See it as a learning curve. It could pay and it could pay more. It's a learning curve. Everything is actually learning at the end of the day. So, I feel that with everything that we've said in this video, it's a good time for you to go shake up your CV, go on LinkedIn, change certain things, talk about the fact that you are open to serve uh, as a non-executive um, independent director uh, in the company, or as a case may be, serve as an advisory board member to a company, to a startup. Let it be one of the things that you are about, especially when you know that you have the cutting edge expertise, experience, and you are coming on board to deliver value. It's not exciting all the time being a board member because it takes a whole lot from you. It takes a lot of discipline. In the next video you will be watching, uh, hopefully in the next couple of videos, you would find uh, a particular video dealing with the challenges of being an advisory board member. So before you check out of this particular video, please subscribe to the video, share the video, place a comment. Uh, the algorithm of YouTube has a way of you know advancing content that people talk about. I want you to talk about this video. If you want to do a review on this video as well, it's perfectly fine. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you need a guest on your show, your business show to talk about things like this or to give deliver training, you know, of any kind, trust me, you're you're actually at the right place. We'll bring we'll bring every expertise that we actually have to enhance the value that you're actually requesting. So join us on the next video and I hope to see you again.